You can buy some pretty cheap tools on websites like wish.com, but are they good value for money or are they absolute trash? We're gonna find out. Francis has ordered a load of tools from wish.com and I've enlisted the help of pro bike mechanic, Nick from Backyard Bike Shop to tell me if they are good or not. This is like Christmas come early for me. You I are a tool geek. I love tools. <laughs> Francis bought all of this stuff, left the country, and I have no idea what is here. Are you optimistic that these tools are gonna to be good? Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, I know what this is. Spittling pliers. I mean, it feels okay. Basic construction, but essentially if it does what you need it to do, you know what, that's what. Oh, okay, hold, hold the chain together. Hold the chain together. Uh, I'm a bit concerned that the name of the brand it's is- called Risk. Risk. It either works, it unclips the spit links or it doesn't. Yeah. So I think the best way to test this one is get a bike with the spit link and let's just take it off and put it back on. Hook that in there, and then essentially hook that in there. Stick that in, pops out. It works, but it's, it's just too small. I mean, maybe if you're out in the trails and carrying the spare, I'd use it, but in the workshop, I would never use this over the park tool one because the arms are just too short. How much do you think it's worth, Nick? I wouldn't pay more than five pounds for it. Well, you'll be pleased to know that it cost 78 pence. In that case, I love it. I was gonna say this is better because it's bigger and it works better, but yeah, you saw me, I'll have one of these things. You could fit this into a saddlebag, so you're gonna carry spare pliers. You could give one of these away with every split link. How much does a split link cost? Uh, I think it's five quid for a SRAM one. Some of them go up to about 10 quid. Five of them for the price of one split link. I was gonna give a 10 out of 10, but the name of the company is called Risk. So based on that, I'm dropping it by two points. So it's eight out of 10 as well. And don't tell Francis, but I'm taking it home. Uh, uh, I'm already not very hopeful. It's just really badly made this one. I'm just not a fan of this as a product. It's fiddly. It doesn't work very well. I'm not happy with it. I wouldn't recommend it. That pops off. It falls apart. <laughs> clean cloth. Got over the chain we've just cleaned. It's still dirty. I bet it's gonna be really cheap. It cost one pound and ninety-five pence. No. And I agree, it's just. And it's just literally I, uh, zero out of ten. Do not buy this, do not waste your money. I've used a couple of versions of this over the years and I've never found them to be very good at cleaning a chain. I would just use a brush and chain cleaner. Allen keys, hex key sets, high quality material, ergonomic design, and then on the back tells you all the bolts that it works into. It looks really nice. I've got concerns, it's just, it looks like it's chrome plated. So how long does that last? Do you think it's chrome plated? It looks like it. So that's hardened. So that's a good sign. We can kind of, yeah, but that's gonna destroy most Allen keys. Oh, it actually looks really good. It's good. But durability means nothing if the sizing isn't correct. So that's a Park Tool 8 mole, and that's the 8 mole. 7.95, and this one is eight on the dot. So tolerances wise, it's still very close. Francis is famous for rounding the bolts on all of his bikes. You won't notice if we've rounded all of them. <laughs> the first thing to test is rim brake, pad bolts, because they are notoriously bad for rounding really quickly. Yeah, that feels good. Let me just feel, compare it to a formal from Park Tool. The same kind of movement. It works. I'm impressed. The color's coming off there already, but that's obviously doesn't really matter. How much do you think this product costs? If it was a reputable company like Vera, um, they retail for the same product, 39 quid. This doesn't have the name. Warranty, so I would say 20 quid should be a reasonable price. These are actually the most expensive tool that we are looking at today, and they were 11 pounds and 96 pence. Yeah, it seems like a solid deal to me. It's difficult because I haven't used it long term. On initial inspection, I'd give it a solid eight out of 10. We're comparing a lot of these tools to Park Tool. It's purely because that's what we've got in the studio. This isn't a sponsored video. But they do make good stuff. That's fine. Another Allen key, multi-tool. Mm, initial feel, it's just very rattly. I bet it's just fallen off. Nothing looks like it's been finished off properly. The screwdriver head isn't even straight. So before I've measured anything else, 
I've got zero confidence in the quality. That's not gonna last more than a week. And I bet it'll rust. So, yes, it's rattly, but we can just tighten that up. It doesn't rattle anymore. Oh, I've done it too tight, they don't come out now. <laughs> Don't try and salvage it. Let's just, let's move on. Oh, it's, it's a, it, it is def, it is not a very good no. time. Can we get some verniers on the uh, Allen keys? That's a five mole. It's not even close, 4.8. I suppose it will still work, but I think eventually it's gonna run bolts. It cost three pounds 74. Wow. Uh, if you're stuck in the middle of nowhere and that's the only thing you've got in your bag to kind of get your way, yes but like I wouldn't pay for it. I'm giving it a four out of 10 rating. I like this. What is it? Tubeless plugging tool. I really like this. So, it's a three in one tool. Can I say, this is actually a four in one tool, but they scribbled out the four thing. Is that not just the plugs? Do you think that's the plug? Yeah, it's one of these. <laughs> All right, so I'm actually wrong. That is a visual representation of a worm. So, the point of tubeless is, it's got sealant in it, if you get a puncture, the sealant seals the tyre. Most of the time. So why would you need this? If it doesn't seal, you can plug the hole. It's better if I just show you. Can we, while Francis is away, destroy one of these tyres, please? Apologies to future Francis, I have literally put his actual gravel bike in the stand, I've topped up the sealant, and we're about to drill some holes in it. Are you ready, Jimmy? I'm ready. Stand away. Watch out. Uh, stop it. Stop it. In this case, you'd use this tool to make the hole bigger. Plug. Because then hold it from side to side and pull it out. Pressure still in there. Spin it. And the sealant will just seal around the plug. I can't believe that actually worked so well. We didn't even make very much mess. Have you seen that? Have you seen the carpet? On the floor. Uh, the tool works perfectly fine. Uh, it's a good tool. It takes a bit of time swapping things in and out, but that's minor. This bit is a bit of a waste. For us, we don't use Schrader valves, only Presta, so we'd never be using that, but, but just for that, it's, it's excellent. How much do you think it's worth? Uh, excluding all, like, being from Wish.com and things like that, I'd pay, gladly pay £10 for it. This kit cost £4. Yeah, good value for money. 7 out of 10. It works really well. Um, the price is decent. That reaming bit is really good. I just be careful to not go too far and damage your room. Obviously the plugs that come with this is more road tie orientated. So they're thinner plugs, 1.5 mil. I don't know if it'll work with bigger plugs. Whilst we're on the subject of tubeless plugs, onto our next item, a pack of 50 well, gravel plugs. Yes, they are tubeless plugs, big ones. So I use them for mountain bikes, bigger tire, bigger holes generally. But that's not 50. We generally cut these in half. That's 100 plugs. That's 100 plugs. Because you wouldn't use a full length. The tool that came with the road plugs, I've actually just used a screwdriver and bent the end open so that the bigger plug fits inside it. Have I jeopardized this? Is it now going to break? Probably. This is what happens when Francis goes on holiday. Be careful to not drill the room. Francis, you're going to need new wheels soon as well. So the reason we're using this botched tool is for all of the tools that we have in this studio, we don't have one, not even one tubeless plug tool. So we've had to botch the one that we got from Wish. Safety first, man. Well, that is a hell of a hole. How much did you say it would cost for 10 plugs? 4.99. 4.99 for 10 plugs? For 10 plugs. And is that 10 that you would cut into 20? Yes. Okay. So, so five times the amount for four pounds 39 pence. Bargain. Uh, I mean, it's, I can't fault this. I don't think you can actually mess these up. I actually have one of these. Do you know what that is? Is it for seating tires? Exactly that. There's a fairly strong chance that this is full of sealant. I'm hoping it's dried up by now. It definitely is some sealant in here. Um, so, imagine you put your tire on the wheel, you're getting to the last bit and you can't get that over the edge over there. This tool hooks in there, the other side hooks underneath the tire and you just pop it up. In what scenario would you use this instead of a normal tire lever 
or even just like forcing it on with your hands. Why would you need that? Well, uh, I would generally say normal tire levers is definitely the go-to, but this is the odd tire wheel combination where it's incredibly tight, you need to get it on. That's like for a worst case scenario. I would strongly suggest if your tires don't go on easily enough on your bike or come off easily enough, don't be riding outside with them because if you're in the middle of nowhere and you don't have this tool, you're gonna be in a world of pain. I've used ours three times in the last year and bike shop. I mean, I bought it because I needed it. I don't care about the price, but I've just Googled it. At the moment on Amazon, for one of them is 989, and it's exactly the same thing, nice. except that's got a black bolt, but even the, the plastic casting is the same. And then obviously they've put their branding on there. Can confidently say this is gonna come out of the same factory or exact, or the same mold. This one is three pounds and 25 pence. So oh, what, what, a third of the price. For when you need it, 10 out of 10. Chain whip and a cassette removal and a square taper crank removal tool. That's just dangerous. If you mess this up, you rip the, the threads out of your crank and then your crank just stays in your bike forever unless you start hacksawing it off. That's not even flat at the top either. That's just, no. A chain whip and a bottom bracket tool and a fixed gear lock ring removal tool. Doesn't feel solid, but bizarrely with all of these, as long as that's machined well, it should do the trick. It's just, you can still damage the BB cups with that. That fits in fairly well. It works. Uh, obviously you need a lot more leverage to use this than using a big chain whip. You can get away with it. Uh, if it was seized on or really tight, you struggle a bit more. I, I don't like how loose that is. If this gets stripped, I take no responsibility. I want it to be decent, it'll work. If you're gonna use it, I mean, in a professional bike shop, you wouldn't use it, because you have to do this quite often. But for the odd... Oh, wait, that did work. Yeah, it's gotten out. Oh, I thought that was its... But that's, oh. that's just a spanner. You could just use a normal spanner. It's not great. So you use the one end... To take the bolt out. To take the bolt out, and then use the other end. Thread. That threads in, so there's a little bit in there, which, pushes. after it's in, pushes the crank off. Oh, yeah. But you have to make sure that it engages enough of these threads and goes in without, so that it's not going to just rub the threads out. Mm. That is tight. No, I'm not going to. It could be fine tightening it more, but that's just too tight for my liking too soon that I'm worried that it's damaging the threads in there. You can already see there, it's taking threads out. It's damaging that. That's a park tool crank puller. Should just go in easier and you can see that I can turn it in by hand. Let's see how it interfaces in that. That just doesn't want to go in. You could probably force it in, but that's the last thing you want to do. If you're using tools like this, the risk is it's not made by replicas, so you don't know like what tolerances they've made this to. Um, there's no like recourse in terms of you can damage whatever you're working on. You could cause more harm than good by trying to use it. We paid six pounds and seventy nine pence for that. No, it's too much. This one, six out of 10, six out of 10, two out of 10. And the two is purely based on if you're stuck in a bind, you can force it in there and use it, but you shouldn't do that. Zero out of 10, because you're just gonna damage your crank, so you're gonna be worse off after using the tool than before using the tool. The whole setup, let's even it out at three out of 10. Yeah, let's see, let's see. Yeah, I like that. That is a chain breaker. That spins really freely, meaning it's machined well. Pins seems to go straight. Chain breakers is the one place where don't think more expensive is always better. Even like from companies like Park Tool, I have found their cheapest one to work better than the expensive one. That works, does the job. The pin heads look pretty much the same size, except the Park Tool one, you can replace that head if you break it. So, the Park Tool one is 35 pounds. Yeah. This is £2.77. £2.77. If you're gonna open a bike shop, definitely invest some money in that because you're gonna use it several times a day and it'll last you for years. But if you're a home mechanic, save your money, buy that and use it the once a year that you need it. Eight out of 10. Uh, I would have given it 10 out of 10 if it had a removable pin. Jimmy, I don't actually know what this is. Huh? Where's the packaging? Does it say anything on mm -hmm. it? Nothing. Oh, don't tell me. I know where it is. Go on. What? <laughs> yes. At first I thought it was a chain catcher, but no. 
That is a truing stand. Don't you mean this is a truing stand? This is a truing stand, but that'll do the exact same thing. I often refer to wheel chewing as like a dark art and I've attempted it once or twice in my past and I've only ever made a wheel worse. This isn't a product for just normal people because surely people don't actually chew their own wheels. No, but the only aspect I could think of using this is if you like a very long distance bike packer and you're in the middle of nowhere and you want to take something in case. It doesn't screw out far enough, so it's not very good. Spin the wheel. That wheel is clearly buckled. Uh, see now, no, no. Like as soon as you touch it, it moves. You try and make sure the wheel is straight by having a consistent pin in one set piece. So while the wheels spin, you can see if it's moving away or closer to it. And then you move it by screwing it in or out closer to it until it starts touching and you'll see it touches and set points. And where it touches, you will either tension or detension the spokes. But if this thing moves when you try and screw it in and out, it's just not accurate. It's completely useless. So I'm giving it a zero out of 10. Oh, it's just pointless. It's not gonna work. You might as well just hold your finger over there, spin the wheel and have a look at that. And that's gonna be more accurate. You're going to be disappointed to learn that this is five pounds and 54 pence. No, 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 no. Take that rubber off and use it for your light as a spare rubber. That's, <laughs> that's where the five pounds, I mean, the only value out of it. Of all of the things that we've played around with today, the three that I'm definitely gonna steal are the Allen key set, because I like that they're color coded, the infinite amount of plugs that I'm never gonna get through, and the mini tire link tool. I agree with you on these three. Possibly that in a worst case scenario. That worked really well. Big thing with this is, it's either a really good value for money, or it's terrible. So it's a bit of hit and miss. I'm not picking any of this stuff over my tools. Thanks for watching, subscribe for some more. We're gonna need another plug.